I'm gonna throw the yoga instructors under the bus here. Not all of you, but some of you. My name is Greg Chapman. I'm a physical therapist and strength and conditioning specialist. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the difference between belly breathing and abdominal opposition style breathing. I'm gonna tell you why you might wanna give up that belly breathing practice for abdominal opposition style breathing. And then we'll go through an activity at the end that you can use to improve your ability to coordinate the diaphragm and the abdominals effectively. So before we get into this video, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. And if you like this video, please go ahead and slap a like on it. So without further Further ado, let's get right into the video. So first of all, what is belly breathing? So I'm gonna throw the yoga instructors under the bus here, not all of you, but some of you, because when I see people that come into uh, see me with this strategy. Usually they pick this up from a yoga instructor. And what they're doing is when they inhale, they're cued to put a hand on the belly. They inhale, they let the belly come forward. And what they're trying to accomplish here is to use the diaphragm more than the accessory muscles of breathing. So instead of using the neck, let's say, to pull the rib cage up, they're trying to keep their breath low, which is a good goal. But unfortunately, by letting this belly distend like that, we're actually robbing ourselves of the dynamics of the lower rib cage. And so what we're doing when we take that breath in and we let that uh, belly distend here, the the diaphragm is moving down, but it's moving down in a bit of an asymmetrical way. And the guts are moving down, forward, and out. This actually displaces the center of mass forward. And then the lower ribs, which would usually move out to the side, and then the sternum to the front, and the spine slightly to the back. Uh, none of that really happens because the abdominals aren't helping to control that movement as we breathe in against that. So unfortunately, the belly breathing is robbing us of those dynamics. It's also shifting that center of mass a little bit further forward, which is going to rob us of shoulder and hip range of motion, increase the posterior compressive aspect of the spine, and it's gonna rob us of that stability that we would otherwise get from this coordinated breathing. So let's talk now about abdominal opposition style breathing and how that is different and why that might be a little bit better. So abdominal opposition style breathing is when we actually have some activity of the abdominals that helps us uh, control the rate at which we get this expansion and it acts as a counterbalance to the down movement of the diaphragm so that we actually get expansion side to side with the ribs but also up front with the sternum and in the back with the spine. And so what this is gonna look like is we're gonna exhale, ribs are gonna to come together, okay, sternum is gonna stay uh, relatively up, and now we have this shape of the rib cage here. We're then gonna breathe in against that as the diaphragm pulls down. We're gonna get expansion of the ribs out to the side, and we're gonna get that anterior to posterior expansion from the sternum to the spine that we're also looking for. What this is going to do is it's going to keep our center of mass a little bit back. This is going to help us get those earlier phases of gait. That's going to give us favorable changes in the connective tissue behavior uh, to decrease stiffness, and that's gonna help us also preserve shoulder and hip range of motion, decrease the posterior compressive strategy on the backside of the spine, and increase that stability that we're looking for through the rib cage, abdomen, and pelvis. So let's now cut to an activity that's one of my favorites, very simple to do, that are gonna improve your ability to use the abdominals to oppose that movement of the diaphragm. So let's check it out. You're gonna stand with your hands on an elevated surface so that your arms are well below shoulder height. You'll push back so that the weight comes into your heels. From this position, you'll bend your knees slightly, feeling your tailbone gently tuck under and your lower back relax. From this position, you're gonna do a long exhale through an open mouth, feeling the abdominals on the outer part and front part of the body come in gently at the end of your exhale. That's gonna look like this. Once you feel those pull in gently, you're gonna maintain slight tension as you breathe in and push down into the elevated surface with your hands. You should feel expansion towards the back part of the rib cage as you maintain slight tension in the front. From this new position, you're then going to exhale again, furthering that slight tension in the front and side abdominals. As you do this, your weight should shift further back into the heels. Then once again, you're gonna maintain the tension in the front side as you take that gentle breath in, feeling expansion on the back side of the body. So 
Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. If you had questions, leave them below in the comments. If you liked the video, slap a like on it. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you hopefully in the next video. Peace.